Architecture influences how we think about a place. You might be standing in a place where a Native American ceremony happened, where a brave general took his first steps, or where women's suffrage held a triumphant protest. If that place now has a brand new skyscraper or is a parking lot, our minds do not consider it a very historical location. Architecture has the ability to influence our imagination. On this block, you can view Art Deco, Colonial Revival, Italianate, and Victorian styles. One place, the Mutual Benefit Building, has camouflaged itself into the block. Although it looks like it's been here for ages, it was just built in the last few years. Two brave generals did in fact take their first steps in this neighborhood, David Gregg and Horace Porter. They were both widely recognized names during the Civil War, although one of them at times probably wished he had a more normal name. Horace Porter was born in this neighborhood on April 15, 1837. He doesn't seem to have always been happy about that. He is known to have said on more than one occasion, quote, oh, the ignorance of us, upon whom Providence did not sufficiently smile to permit us to be born in New England. We can't be sure just how sarcastic he was being. Little is known about General Porter's life until he became a captain in the Army in 1863. He was recognized by his superiors when he rallied enough men to reform broken battle lines at Chickamauga. He was only a volunteer aide, and his plan to hold the lines was improvised, but it worked. Because of General Porter, the supply caravans being attacked were able to escape to safety. Life was not just war for Horace Porter. In his later years, he served under President Grant as his executive secretary and was an ambassador to France. He was a well-known orator and gave the keynote address at the de dedication of Grant's tomb. To say he and Grant were good friends would be unjust. He raised most, most of the funds that built Grant's tomb and was responsible for its design. If you want to learn more about the friendship between these two men, you can read Porter's book, Campaigning with Grant. Brigadier General Mad Mac was the other general who spent part of his childhood in this neighborhood. His given name was David McMurtry Gregg, and he was involved in the Battle of Gettysburg. During that battle, he organized a huge cavalry charge. General Gregg was cited by a large group of military historians as having, quote, gained one of the most vital cavalry victories of the war. Gregg also served as a diplomat, but apparently enjoyed it less than General Porter. For a brief time, he was in Prague. You may be a hardened Civil War general, but when your wife says she hates Prague, you get out of Prague. Happy wife, happy life. The general thought of himself not as a diplomat, but as cold-hearted and detached. His actions speak differently. Mad Mac attended Robert E. Lee's funeral and even visited the ill widow of General Stonewall Jackson. He came from a long line of public servants and benevolent men who we'll talk about at our next stop. Well, actually, Miranda is going to talk about them. I'll see you again at stop 10.